And welcome to another episode of On the Couch with Shante and John L. Allen Bay. And he's definitely on the couch today. <laughs> so if you can remember, in our last season, season one, Janelle was on the couch and he talked about um, behind the scenes with Janelle. So we're following up with Janelle to see what's been going on with him since um, season one. So first, follow up for those that don't know you. Who is Janelle Allen Bay? Well, Janelle Allen Bay is a very complex person who is a returning citizen. Okay. Um, I served 29 years in uh, Michigan Department of Correction. And um, I've been home now 31 months. Wow. Yeah, so. I'm a businessman, entrepreneur. I'm also a, um, I'm a media personality, right? Yes, you are. Yeah, so I'm really a media personality. But uh, my passion is giving back. My passion is the, uh, the 70 million returning citizens in this country and being able to restore them and make them important because they are. That's my passion, so. Yeah. yeah. Can you share with us an audience about some of your recent accomplishments because you've made a name for yourself. I mean, you got out running. There's a board that you're a part of and then you were recently in the media. Good morning, America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. So. Um, one of the things I'm not good at is being able to talk about myself because I'm a very humble person. And uh, you wouldn't know it because I live an extraordinary life, so, but <laughs> I'm very humbled. And, um, but yeah, we, uh, we've accomplished a lot of things uh, you know, in, a, in our town, in the city of Flint. And matter of fact, I, I was, uh, I'm here in Georgia for a purpose also more than just on the couch. Right. Uh, there are 40, a uh, thousand people were incarcerated in the jails here and they're having a runoff. And uh, so we've been invited to come here and uh, try to get some things in order. So we're, we got a meeting tomorrow <laughs> and uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I just got a, a position. I'm the ambassador for Genesee County. So um, I'm ecstatic about that. But what does that mean now? You, you're just glossing over that, the ambassador. Yeah. For what? For the the county, Genesee County uh, Sheriff's Department. I've been deputized. Um, yeah. I was the first returning citizen in our state to be deputized as a, a sheriff. Yes. Yeah. And um, I'm humbled because of the fact that they allowed and trusted me to bring a team in of returning citizens, and they were deputized last week. So I'm ecstatic about that. Yeah. One thing about, uh, in my blood, my I was always taught that uh, you can't do it by yourself. If you get a chance to be great, make sure you take others with you to be great. Mm -hmm. And so that's always my motto is that if I could take somebody with me, I'm going to, and so that's important to me. Right. Seeing that this is an election year um, yeah. as to why they're bringing you um, into Georgia to, to do some things. Yeah. When people are citizens, are incarcerated, they're in the county jail, they're not formally charged and sentenced. No, they have a right to vote. They okay. have a right to vote. So the law reads that any person who is not convicted uh, and waiting trial has a right to vote in any election. They, they are a citizen. And um, once you are paroled, then you reinstate it back. Um, I'm working on more causes. I believe that if you're incarcerated, you don't lose that right to vote. And so I'm pushing the envelope. Uh, they say it can't happen. I don't believe that. Uh, we have people who are in our prison system who uh, pay taxes and they're counting on the census. And uh, the Supreme Court just ruled uh, that they deserve stimulus. So they've been getting stimulus checks. So all these things is happening and you're telling me you can't vote, that doesn't make sense to me at all. So uh, we're gonna restore that and make sure that that happens. You know, In Genesee County, they told us it couldn't happen and um, I was able to go into the jails during COVID-19 and right. um, it, there were some people who had COVID-19, but I had to figure out something. And I was thinking about that the night before the election. And uh, 
I, I woke up and I heard them say something about what was happening on the national scene. They said that if a person had COVID or signs of it, then what they could do is call the poll and they would send someone out and they would put it in their mailbox and the person with the COVID can come to their mailbox, right? Do the ballot and put it in some plastic and put it back into the mailbox. Well, I'm like, well, hell, that's a no brainer. I'll just take plastic to the jail. They can put it in the jail, put it out the slot. I can do that. <laughs> so, I mean, there was no reason to me why this couldn't happen. And so it happened on, and uh, I, I'm ecstatic that I was a part of the process and, right. and that I was the one that was able to do something great for my city. And on the, the highlight from Good Morning America, I want to bring that back because they had a picture of you yeah. walking across the street from the county jail to deliver yeah. the ballots. Well, anybody that knows me, I'm, I'm extra. So yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, I told the sheriff, I said, hey, listen, sheriff, this is what I need you to do. I need you at five o'clock. I need... Uh, two deputies to pull the cars out, put the sirens on. I want the street blocked off yep. for eight minutes. It's going to take me eight minutes to get from across the street, right? <laughs> really, two when I wanted to eight. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was important that that the whole county was on board of what we were trying to do. You know, I, I didn't want this thing not to have an impact and right. to shut down a major street Mm -hmm. Like Saginaw Street in the city of Flint is major and it had never yeah. happened before. So I was thinking extra, we got to make that happen. And I asked, did you, could you please put the sirens on also? Because I, yes. I want the lights <laughs> on when we do this here. And so that was what happened. How many ballots did you deliver? Um, we, over 500 people were able to vote in this process. Yes. And we did the absentees. <laughs> and... Um, but the critical thing is what happened next day. Next day, I went into the jails on every floor and I wanted them to know that this is how it happened. You, you made this happen. And I wanted them all to applaud themselves. Yeah. I wanted them to know that you're engaged here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you didn't see the news, but we represented you, you know, and I could not have done this or our team could not have done it without y'all. You know, and that mattered. The next day was the most powerful time because I had people coming up to me, man, grown men, you know, killers, you know, and it was like, look, they was crying like, man, thank you. And, uh, right. you know, that touched me. That touched me because of the fact that that's what it's about, you know, impacting people's lives. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So we want to learn more about what you're doing, Janelle, and I, you're very humble in, in the things that you're doing. Yeah. But I want to I want to be able to highlight you during this show because you are extraordinary in some of the things that you're doing and the things that, that are happening and the energy that you put behind things. And now you're in Georgia to help. So what we're going to do is when we come back from this next segment here, we'll talk about that. All right. On the Couch with Shantae and Janelle focuses on educational, humorous, and insightful topics based on extraordinary lives of real people. Each episode provides real talk from real people. We all just naturally just love each other. Like, wow. and see, you know, we as human beings, we as people, we're visual. Okay. We're visual. Yeah, sure. You know what? I'm not going to give up. That's I'm right. a fight. And... I believe God has blessed me to do things in a really good way to set good standards. We need to set the standard that, you know something, we can do mess, um, business with black folks. They will travel, they will do meetings, they will be articulate, they will be uh, on point. Join Shantae Hill, a certified counselor, and John L. Allen Bay, a life coach and relationship expert weekly for On the Couch with Shantae and John L. Shante Hill and John L. Allen Bay are the king and queen of relationships. Each week, the couple engages their audience with hot, sexy topics about relationships for the grown and sexy. The show is interactive, fun, and real. Our next topic. I got drunk. Hold on. I got drunk the other night, and my girl grabbed my ears from behind. So she was behind him, grabbed his ears, and then he smacked her. 
I immediately pro uh, apologized, but to be honest, I meant it and I knew it was her. I felt horrible about hitting her, but I felt good at the same time. What's up with this? Tune in weekly to She Say, He Say with Shante Hill and John L. Allen Bay. For more information, visit shesayhesay.media. So welcome back to On the Couch with Shante and John L. Allen Bay. Thank and you. John L. is on the couch and he is sharing some insight. I'm very uncomfortable on the couch. <laughs> well, it's not the therapy couch. So you're well, okay. You, you know, on the therapy couch, <laughs> I'll just release it. <laughs> so before the break, you were talking um, more about some of the things that you are doing. Yeah. So, so you know what? If I, first of all, I, I just want everybody in the audience to know that it's not me. It's not me. It, it, it's something higher than me. My creator, my God has given me this platform. So I have a responsibility. My responsibility is to make sure and uh, that I'm a living example of that there's nothing impossible, okay? So I, I stand, sit here humble because of the mm -hmm. fact that um, even just being on as her co-host, I'm honored because of the fact that, you know, I ain't supposed to be here, right? But I'm here. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I tell people around when I go around the country that we're not asking for uh, a seat at the table. We're, that's not what we are looking for. We're looking for you to join our table because you need to know exactly what we're going through, our plight, if you're gonna be effective and change. And so that's where I'm at with that, you know? So that's what matters to me. Uh, we have a motto that says that those who are closest to the problem have the solutions. Right. And so, if you want to know about black people, get with black people. <laughs> you know, if you right. want to know about white people, get with white people. And right. you can understand their story. But if you don't get with those who are connected, then you're going to miss. So I liked um, one time you mentioned we were somewhere and people say, John L is into this. He's doing that. He's a lot of places. But you said that you've been planning for this for 29 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, fortunately, I had an opportunity to, to sit back and figure some stuff out. Mm -hmm. And uh, being incarcerated, you, you learn some lessons. The first lesson you learn is how to get along with people. Because you're going to meet all walks of life. I mean, you're going to deal with people who are the most heinous to people that you can look at and you're like, man, they don't belong there or even dealing with staff. You know, I've had to deal with a lot of things in my life. And the most uh, important lesson that I learned is always be receptive to humans. Yeah. And so that, uh, that was what helped me is to be able to plan. And I would watch CNN and um, I seen a program that they had and it was called Black in America. And I was sitting in the, the prison and I was looking at that and I'm like, man, they got this all wrong. What, what, what the hell is it? What, what's they doing? And even when they came in a prison and talked with a guy, you know, and uh, I scolded him. I said, hey man, he, you had a platform. You, here's an opportunity to, to, to really impact the world. Right. And uh, you, you, it's fluff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't give nobody no fluff. If you can't give it to people real and straight up, you know, just be, just be quiet. You know, right. and, and allow people who really understand what's happening to express this so that people can really see what's happening around here. That's the only way change is going to happen. You know, right. you know, don't don't tell nobody about their story. Let them tell their story, you know, and once they tell their story, then you can give them a platform. And, you know, that's why I love what we do here, you know. We don't want to tell your story. We want you to tell your story because this is your brand and, and I love it. Right, right. So what is important to Janelle Allen Bay now? My legacy. Okay. My legacy. I've done a lot of wrong, you know, destroyed a lot of lives. So it's important that I restore a lot of lives, right? Mm -hmm. And that I leave an impression that you know, that people know that I've been here, right? And when I was here, I made a difference. I made a difference because of the fact that what you thought wasn't valuable, 
I showed you it is. It's valuable. Right. And what you thought that couldn't happen, it can. You know, um, I'm a counselor. You know, I, I specialize in relationships. I'm a life coach. I, I help people who are going through traumatic experiences in life, right? right? But that doesn't define me. You know, I'm, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, you know, I'm a returning citizen. I'm a person who, I'm a deputy sheriff, I'm an ambassador. You have you a know? lot of roles. And so, yeah, and so I, I, I want to instill that, that, you know, don't let nobody define you. You know, you make sure that you define yourself and you are the narrator of your own story. Wow, that's powerful. You also talked about being the voice of the, of the voiceless, voiceless. Absolutely. And when I say that, um, that means that there's people who will never have a chance. Or there's people who have been so impacted, so beat down. You know, I come from Flint, okay? And Flint's a little town, but it's powerful because we're everywhere in the world, you know about us. And sometimes right. for the wrong reasons. Right. You know, people, I go around, I tell them, Flint, they talk about, man, you drink the water. No, and, you know, that's not my story. You know, the water didn't define me, even though I have grandchildren who were affected by the water. But I want the narrative to change about Flint. I want people to know that there's unlimited possibilities there, that we can teach the world how to be resilient and how we are able to show the world that no matter what the situation is, we can put people in the NFL, we can put people on the moon, we can put people who are returning citizens, they can rise to the top. So that's what's important to me. There was also another um, thing that you did this year. <laughs> Let's talk about the ACLU. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah. So um, in two minutes, I'll sum this up here. Um, I was the first returning citizen to be put on as the board of director for the ACLU in the state of Michigan. And I, I take pride in that. Uh, and I, I was humbled when I got the, the call and said, look, we want you, you know. And so I'm sitting with all these people. Everybody got these triple law degrees and, this, uh, and you know, they're, they have all of this talent. And... Uh, they asked me, they says, well, wh what do you bring? And I said, well, I bring 29 years of experience in this here. I've been mentoring people and changing lives for almost 30 years. This is not new to me. Yeah. I did this in prison. And uh, when I was interviewed by uh, an organization, they asked me what's my motto. And I told them, when I, you're never going to be greater later. Mm -hmm. What you are today is what you're going to be tomorrow. Yeah. And so that's what I believe in. So we're going to go to uh, another commercial here. Yes. Yeah. And we're coming back and I'm going to be on the couch again. Yes. We'll be right back with All more right. of John Neal on in the hot seat. In the hot seat. It. It's going to get hotter. <laughs> that's right. On the Couch with Shantae and Janelle focuses on educational, humorous, and insightful topics based on extraordinary lives of real people. Each episode provides real talk from real people. We all just naturally just love each other. Like, wow. and see, you know, we as human beings, we as people, we're visual. Okay. We're visual. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm not going to give up. That's right. I'm going to fight. And I believe God has blessed me to do things in a really good way to set good standards. We need to set the standard that, you know something, we can do mess, um, business with black folks. They will travel, they will do meetings, they will be articulate, they will be uh, on point. Join Shante Hill, a certified counselor, and John L. Allen Bay, a life coach and relationship expert weekly for On the Couch with Shante and John L. Shante Hill and John L. Allen Bay are the king and queen of relationships. Each week, the couple engages their audience with hot, sexy topics about relationships for the grown and sexy. The show is interactive, fun, next and real. Our next topic. I got drunk. Hold on. I got drunk the other night, and my girl grabbed my ears from behind. So she was behind him, grabbed his ears, and then he smacked her. I immediately appro uh, apologized, but to be honest, I meant it, and I knew it was her. I felt horrible about hitting her, but... I felt good at the same time. What's up with this? 
Tune in weekly to She Say, He Say with Shante Hill and John L. Allen Bay. For more information, visit shesayhesay.media. And welcome back to On the Couch with Shante and John L. Allen Bay. I'm literally on the couch here. <laughs> So we've been talking on this episode about you and um, the great things that you've been doing. Okay. Right? Because we always say great. And there's a reason why we say great. Absolutely. Because the fact that on our show, we take ordinary people with extraordinary lives, right? Yes. And I'm living an extraordinary life. In this moment. Yes, you are. So let's talk about your role at Nation Outside, and what is Nation Outside for those that may not know? Oh yeah, that's another hat I wear. <laughs> so I'm a director of a nonprofit and it's based in the city of Flint. My, my uh, responsibility is for the returning citizens and those who are impacted and families in our great city. So um, once again, I, I'm honored, and I'm honored to that Monday we're going to host Um, something that's very impactful in our community as well as in this country. And it's called Black Men Lives Matter. And we're going, we got a panel set up that's going to happen. And uh, I'm I'm fired up, you know, to get home Monday for that, you know, because I know that um, this is going to be something that's going to take us to a whole different level. And when I say us, I mean us men of hue in this country here. And so I'm I'm fired up about it. And you are definitely an advocate. And there are some things that's like, what's next for Janelle when it comes to advocacy? Well, um, I'm working on a a fair ordinance for the city of Flint. I believe that anyone who has a felony, they should be stopped from being able or prohibited from living anywhere that they can afford to be. If your credit score right, you should be able to live anywhere. That doesn't make sense to me. And so I'm fighting that and uh, that's low fruit. I'm gonna win that one, you know, so (laughs) I'll have that done within 30 days. And uh, the next is being able to create um, a whole different environment where economically we're empowered as a, Mm -hmm. a people, a race of people. I live in a town that, uh, city of Flint, that 43% of the people live in poverty. That's right. Okay, that's got to change because there's a correlation between poverty and crime. Right. And so when we realize that we, we're looking at this uh, criminal stuff, but let's look at the poverty first. Let's change the economics uh, and, and the way we do business by starting more vocational programs that's going to benefit. So. I'm with a, um, trying to bring a program that's in our county right now called Ignite, where we give everybody in the county jail a platform, a vocational skill where they can be hired in. I just partnered with AutoZone where we're going to launch something this week where they're hiring people with felonies and returning citizens, and uh, they're, they're giving them an opportunity to be sustained. You know, that, that's, that's what's important to me. And then um, my uh, personal life, I, I'm, I'm going to take that to a different level uh, this upcoming year, too. You know, so okay. there's somebody out there I'll probably be pursuing in marriage <laughs> or something. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about the she say, he say? Oh, thing? man, listen. So Sunday, tune in, everyone. At eight o'clock, we do. Every she Sunday. say, he say. Every we were in Columbus, Ohio last week. She was scared to death, right? Because I got all this Michigan gear on, and uh, they're saying all at kind Ohio of stuff State to, in Ohio, <laughs> not and, just uh, Ohio. Y'all know we brave, so we anywhere. And um, and she's like, I, I don't think we should be wearing this here. And I'm like, Hey, gal, just hold on, keep it going. But we did a live show there, and uh, what we do is she say, he say is we give a perspective about relationships from a male and female perspective. Now, it's grown folks now. It ain't like this. There's a lot of stuff be going on, you know. She cusses a lot. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Not not me, right? (laughs) No, we have a great time. We have a a great audience. We'll be here live tomorrow. Yes. And we talk about relationships. Any and everything about relationships, of course, from a... The, the perspectives that we right. were talking about. Absolutely. And it's unfiltered. 
Very unfiltered. Yes. Because we have uh, a lot of grannies calling in <laughs> saying some dirty stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's been wonderful it to, to interview you and have you on this side of the yeah. couch. But you have a story. You have a phenomenal story to share. And I think we, we should, well, I want to say think, people should know. Okay. Because they see you and they say, okay, this guy is well put together, but they don't know your backstory. And understanding your backstory and, and the, the struggles you've had and the resilience, that says a lot. Well, I just want to talk about the struggles. The struggles have never been struggle to me. It's always been, hey, this is life. You need to figure this out because that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? Every day, the sun ain't going to come up. Some days it's going to rain, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Some days it's going to snow. And so the thing about it is, how are you prepared for whatever that's about to happen? And I like to believe that um, people around me shape me to be able to have this platform and navigate through anything. 29 years incarcerated, I never said, whoa, me. I was like, hey, y'all, let's, let's figure this out. Let's do something greater, you know. And uh, that's important to me. And, and so that's the attitude I have today. You know, let's do yeah. something great. And how can people find out more about John L. Allen Beck? Call her. She's my <laughs> consultant. She, she's my consultant. So um, contact Shante. And uh, no, um, you can get me anywhere. John L. Um, dot Allen Bay at gmail.com. You can get me a reconnect my life. You can yes. get me, uh, she say, he say. Um, so I'm not hard to locate in, at all. And um, my phone rings all night. I'll take a call. Yes, you, you will. Know, I'll take a yeah. call anytime. And um, this is what we do. This is important to me that we have an impact. So thank you for allowing thank me you. to be your co-host. Thank you yeah. for being brave enough to sit in the seat. Yeah. And then she helps me out because, you know, she, she's a beautiful woman. So, you know, she helps me look at sustainable here. So, Again, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And until next time, thank you for joining us for On the Couch with Shantae. And John L. Allen Bay. Peace. Love. <laughs>